morning. I have the privilege of uh, sharing a, a word with you. The word is in two parts, but I will share the first part. And then maybe <laughs> my pastor is saying that next week. Hallelujah. <laughs> I pray so. Amen. Thank God for your lives. Thank God for the grace of God. Um, I always say that when I stand in front here, I see it uh, as a great opportunity and a privilege. So it is not a place where you play with. Hallelujah. Because the word is what builds and grants inheritance to the saints or to them that are sanctified. So it is not just you not knowing what you have to say, but what the Lord is actually communicating. For the past uh, one month, we've been talking about the realities of the resurrection. And as the word has been coming, me sitting down and looking into myself and trying to um, descend what the Holy Spirit is communicating. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar are the people who know the times and the seasons. So as a believer, you always have to know the times and seasons in which you find yourself. So if you are living in an, uh, a locality, an environment, and certain things are going on spiritually or physically, certain manifestation, you should know that these are the signs or certain messages that the Lord is communicating. So I was asking the Holy Spirit what it actually means. And the Lord is saying that I'm calling you people into the place of growth. Somebody say growth. So the Lord is calling us as a ministry to press forth, to push forth for more of spiritual growth or growing more into him. Amen. So that is why the messages that have been coming are so strong and challenging to also let you know that you have a part to play. Are we together? Actually, this Thursday I had a, a dream and it was a very beautiful one. I, a friend of mine that I know I saw him in a vision. I was to go and do something in Obuasi for someone. And looking at the time that I should get there, I need to get there like one hour or two hours. And we all know that if you are going to Obuasi by bus, it has to take like eight hours before you can get there. So as I was telling my friend, oh, he said, we just came from Obuasi, me and my wife. I said, wow. So what time did you leave there? He said, no, there is a bullet train that you can use to get access there. Within five minutes, I was in Obuasi. And I finished my whatever I wanted to do. So when I woke up, the Lord said, this is what I have always been saying. Let people see the negativity that is going on in the nation, but see positive. This is what the nation is about to experience. I've told you, this is the second time I'm having a vision like that. The other one, I was in... Bukum area to get to Tema. Within some few seconds, there was a subway through the coastal area to the place. So what I want you to understand is that as a people of this nation, God has called us to transform this nation. And one of the ways by which we transform is through prayer. So let's keep on praying because whatever we have been communicating and speaking will definitely manifest in reality. Hallelujah. So let them do whatever they are doing. Let the negativity be there, but you see the positivity. Hallelujah. I told Pastor Lord the other time that all pastors or even men of God, people who are holding microphone and supposed to be encouraging and building faith are speaking negative because things are not going well in this nation. It shows the level of growth. When we are attacked by external circumstances, we forget who we are. We forget the place that we need to stand and speak from. But the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 7 that there was chaos in the land of Samaria. But one prophet said, tomorrow about this time, there shall be plenty. And as he spoke the word, that is when God caused the footsteps of four leprous men to begin to be like noise in the hearts and ears of their enemies. And they fled the place. And then Israel now had abundance to eat. So as we begin to speak positively as to how it comes to pass, we have no idea. But God will help us or God will make sure it comes to pass. Amen. So let's not... The news that we always listen to. This week I was going through my notes and I found out something I said sometime. He said that 
both faith and fear all comes by hearing. But you have to decipher and select what you need to hear. So, fear cometh. They said false evidence appearing real, right? So, it is fear that the news is communicating. I don't listen to politics because when I'm listening, I'm getting angry. Because... The, both the opposition and the, the ones in government, if you are the one who wants to come to power, whatever, so whatever you lied about to come there, when you get there, you want to preserve it by lies. So what you are speaking now, when you get there and it is your time, you are facing that circumstances. If it is you, will you speak the same truth? So because we are not finding righteous men, that's why the people are mourning. But God is saying to us as believers, grow up from the midst of them. And speak positively to situations, to things. Because your God supplies your need according to his riches in glory and not on earth. Are we together? So as believers, we have to come to the place of maturity and know that we are more than what we see. We are more than what is happening around us. We are inside out people and not outside in. Our communications are from the inner man. From the reality of who we are as what? A people of God. Are we together? Yeah. yeah. You may be for a blue, white, red. Or green, white, red. And blue, what and what. But that's not our communication. Are we together? So this morning I want to talk about how to grow spiritually. So just to motivate you to know that God is with us as a nation. And the Lord loves us. His mind is on us. But he's looking for somebody that will always speak positive. When we read first uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, he says that the foundations, the eons, that were there, the wells were framed by the word of God. So either God spoke by himself and the things came into being or God uses you as a believer or messenger to speak. Hallelujah. By faith, we understand that the wells, the word wells there were framed is eons. It means that the world that you want to see, how did God create heaven and earth? He created by speaking. So how do you want to have your own world without speaking? If you are a replica in his image, the only way you can have your world is by what? Speaking. If you don't speak, nothing responds. When God speaks, everything hears and everything responds. So when you speak as a child of God, everything hears and everything also aligns. Elisha spoke and things began to align. When you speak, things will align. Hallelujah. So by faith, it is by faith, we understand that the wells were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things what? Which are visible. So what life are you expecting? What future do you want to see? If it is your health, if it is what? Your business, your marriage, whatever it is in the natural you want to have. It stems from the spiritual before it comes to the natural. And how you bring it into the reality is by speaking. Are we together? Now let's go into the message. What is spiritual growth? When we are talking about growing spiritually. So if I say some things that are challenging to you, just know that it is for your good and my good. All of us, God is saying that, Ronel, let's grow to this place. Let's grow and have more of him. This week, I read a scripture that Paul is saying that I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, leaving behind, these things, I leave them behind because I realize that these things are sins or things that easily beset me. They are some things that forbid my growth. There are some things that hinder me from having more of God. They are, these are things that I can't hold on to anymore. So I am a Pharisee by the training of Gamaliel. In Acts chapter 5, we saw that man is the one that said, stop the, don't stop these people. If you try to stop them, you may be fighting against God. And Paul went against the master's command or his boss's command and went fighting the believers. And on his way, he encountered light. And when he encountered light, then he realized that to be a Pharisee, I count it as dank. These things cannot help me because there is more I see in him. So all the heroes of faith, all the people that we see in the Bible that did something, there was something that God spoke to them when they obeyed. God counted it as faith. 
Some people, God will say that, you, be righteous. Don't drink any wine or don't let a razor cut your head until this. Or you, go or live from your father's house and mother's house. And then as they obey, God count it as faith. So righteousness or just be in obedience to what God is saying. So when you hear the word that is challenging you to grow as a, a child of God, that is how God sees your faith. Are we together? So spiritual growth is the increase and in development in spiritual things. For the past one month, Pastor Lord has really challenged me. He has taught us some things. Jesus spoke some things. He taught some things. And all of a sudden, most of the apostles or believers that were with him, the disciples started leaving. And Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, will you also go? And Peter said, where are we going? You are the one that has the words of what? Life or eternal life. So the things that will cause us to grow, to drop some things and to move more into maturity for God. Most believers, we don't want it because we want the transient one. The things that we can have now, the mundane things. Thank you. Hallelujah. But until you begin to grow, until you begin to mature as a believer, certain inheritances can never be given to you. Don't get me wrong. Grace has made all of us equal. But God has favorites. By the platform of grace, where all of us are born again, there are some things, most of us being here are parents. You have children. If you have an inheritance, and you want to give to your son or your daughter, and they are age three, will you give it to them? Why won't you give it to them? They cannot handle it. Okay. So, that's what I'm saying. All of us are born, so they are your children. By grace, you have given birth to them. They are like 10 or 12, a football team with a coach. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you cannot give them, or you cannot entrust certain things Roots or certain inheritances into their hands. The last time we went past the Lord, we were discussing something. You see, Jesus said some things. There are some things I want to tell you, but I can't tell you now. When the Holy Spirit comes, He will tell you. And Paul also said, There are some things I want to communicate to you, but you are still babes. I can't tell you. So it means that these two people, Jesus, our senior brother, and then Paul, they deprived us of certain truths because of the immaturity of certain disciples. Oh, you're not getting me. Hallelujah. So, until you begin to grow to a certain level, certain inheritances, God will not give to you. But, by his grace, you are his son. You find yourself in the kingdom. You are a child of God. But, when God begins to see that you are making certain steps, or you are, you are taking certain uh, strides to grow, he begins to show you some things. He begins to entrust some things into your hands. When I began to pray for people. The Lord, is, the Lord will show me somebody and I begin to. First, I didn't used to pray. When I see it, it was like fun. And the thing will be playing like video and then it happens in my sight. And then sometimes I began to feel regret. And the Lord said that that time in the days of ignorance, I overlook. But when knowledge comes, it doesn't overlook anymore. So when God shows you something about your nation, about an individual, it means that he has given you the capacity to deal with that thing. It is not for you to see that it is fun. God begins to entrust certain truths into your hands to give to other people or to give for the body or to teach the body because he has found you faithful and sees your maturity level. That's why he's showing them to you. Amen. So spiritual growth is the increase and in development in spiritual things. That is things that pertain to the kingdom. Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the things that pertain to the kingdom of God, that pertains to Christ and the Holy Spirit. So when God begins to unfold or begin to see your growth, he begins to entrust certain truths or certain things about the kingdom into your hands. So, now I want us to look at the characteristics of our spiritual growth. Number one, the goal of spiritual growth is to grow into Christ and be like him. Because the Lord is our pastor, but he is not the standard for your spiritual growth. Isaac Newman is your brother, 
but I am not the standard for your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Boske is our brother, but he is not our standard for spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Not any archbishop, not any apostle, but the only one we must grow and be like is Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, is this 6, 11 or 4? He says that the main reason that he gave some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors is for the perfecting of the saints that through them or through their perfection, through their shaping us, through their teaching us of the word, we will grow. Uh -huh. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry. So it means that every believer, are we all disciples? We are disciples. And the word disciples means student. So if you are a student, it means that you are to be equipped for ministry. And the last time we saw that the ministry we have is the ministry of what? Reconciliation. So every believer has a ministry. So the goal of your pastor is to help you, shape you, fine tune you, and perfect you so that you will be qualified or get to the place of the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. So that is the pastor's duty. It is not to show you to himself or let you come to him. You come. When you need prayer, I'll pray for you. I'll, I'll bottle oil and give it to you. I'll do this and that and that. So most of the things that we experience in this part of the world is that the men of God are our standard of spiritual growth. So when they fall, your faith get crushed. The pastors that you look up to, the people you look up to, when you hear that they have certain scandals, then you begin to question your Christian life. And it makes it open for the enemy to mock us and to attack the faith of some people. Hallelujah. So that is why over here, our goal is that we want to show you Christ and show you Christ and show you Christ and keep showing you Christ until you grow into the maturity and stature of him and not me. That's why I'm saying that for the New Testament Christian or believer, for the new covenant, you can outgrow your pastor. The kingdom suffered violence and the violence takes by force. So if you begin to grow, you can grow more than your pastor who is not growing. Are we together? Yes, this morning I will challenge you with certain truths. Because the Lord has already built a foundation. He said when he preached, the wife said, nobody listened to you. Or people listen, but the message was challenged by Jesus is glad with you. Or Jesus is happy for you. Me, I want Jesus to be happy for me. Oh. If you are not happy, that one is mine. Mine. Back. <laughs> Kiss. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That one, dear. Me, I don't, I don't want my wife to come and say, you preach well. <laughs> no, for me, where I'm coming from. Hallelujah. I will tell you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans chapter 8 verse 29 and 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. Let's do it quickly so that because of time. So the work of the ministry, the work of your pastor, the evangelist, every one of us, those operating in the offices, their work is to help you. Hallelujah. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of who? His son. So every, every one of us, every believer, some time ago, man of God, you know what the Holy Spirit said to me. He says that when you see, let me say, an archbishop, and you call him archbishop, and you are, you are bowing down to him. In heaven, when they call, they all come. I call them, you are all brothers. Hallelujah. Before God, he sees all of us as his sons. Titles doesn't matter in front of him. When you get to him, he doesn't say that, Bishop Ronel, you are welcome. When he's calling, he said, my son. Yeah. Or he says, thou servant. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, thou faithful servant. That's what he sees us. He even sees us as liberals. Because that's what we are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, when it comes to spiritual growth, the one we are to conform to is Christ. So that we might, or he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he is the first fruit of God. He is the firstborn of God. So over here, we can listen to all the mess. We thank God for a ministry like this where you come and it's not only one person preaching. But you can have diverse people sharing the word in depth. Hallelujah. Amen. That is a place where it tells you that this is a fountain of life. I can grow from there. So even if the pastor is not there or all the pastors are not there, somebody from the congregation can stand here and preach and preach well. 
some of you don't come to the Friday, so you don't, you don't, you didn't see some of the ladies preaching. Some of them preach very powerfully. Hallelujah. Some will be sharing, and then I'll be sitting down and say, hey, Charlie, if you don't do your work well, when it comes to the kingdom, everybody is replaceable. Hallelujah. No, certain things, when you hear, it tells you that, oh, as for me, when I'm not there, the work cannot move. Eh. The kingdom of God for you. If you are not there, it will not move. He will build his church, and even the gates of Hades cannot prevail. You are too small. Hallelujah. So, all we have to do is that, let's look at Christ. He should be our picture. Jesus is our image. He is our everything we look up to for perfection, for growth. So, even when we are going, or all of us are growing, and then somewhere, somehow, I fall short by sin. All you do is that you hold my hand. He says that, if any one of you fall, let them that are standing and strong spiritually hold their hands and pull them along. Hallelujah. But when you are not looking at Christ and you are looking at a man, when that person falls, you to you fall. Hallelujah. Last week I read a certain article. Something happened in Zimbabwe and I was crying. You've seen that thing. A pastor was taking people into a deep part of the forest and then he teaches them how to fast. And the fasting is not, he, no food, no water. And some have died and there is mass graves. He has buried them. If you try to escape, he kills you. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is the demonic indoctrination that people have been indoctrinated into. And this thing happened for, ye, for some time. They arrested him and released him. And then he went further and said that God says he should have his own city. So he left the whole town and went into deep forest. So when he comes into the city, he lures people and takes them into the city. Why? Because these are ignorant, gullible believers or people who are seeking spiritual truth. But somebody comes and projects himself as somebody that knows. So they follow the person. Before you realize, you are into the deep forest where he has security people. You have to go through that fasting. You go and Google it. That thing you see. I read it and I was crying. So, uh, this is where people are. The Bible says that if God himself doesn't shorten the time, even the very elect shall be deceived. When COVID happened and we were crying and we knew that this is man-made, people were saying that it is not true. But later on, they have gone and come to tell us that this is man-made. Hallelujah. See, the way God is, Jesus was saying that you will hear of this. You will hear of that. And even in the midst of all that, the time is not yet. He did not say he's the one that brings, who is going to bring them. He says those things will be happening. It means that there will be involvement of men or the work of men and the devil that will be bringing all those things into, into uh, existence. Hallelujah. But in all of them, he is not coming yet. Hallelujah. But he wants you to know and be aware in the place where you are, that no, you cannot, you have to grow. You have to come to the place that you know that no, we have to be above all these things. These are the times that he spoke about. So in these times, how do we align ourselves? Hallelujah. So, spiritual growth that doesn't have Christ as the focus and center has missed it. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Number two, what is the goal of spiritual growth? Spiritual growth has to do with spiritual things. Man has a part to pray or to play, sorry. Man has a part to play. First Corinthians 12 verse 1. It has to do with spiritual things. God wanting to what? give you some things. But we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into what? The same image from glory to glory, just as by the Holy Spirit of the Lord. So that is the goal, that we are transformed, we are growing in today's. We are growing to become like Jesus. So, our equipers must equip us in this direction. Spiritual growth is not automatic. Somebody says it's not automatic. When a child is born, they don't just, because they were born female, they don't just rise up and say, I'm a woman. No, there are stages that the child begins to grow. If you're a female, you begin to grow until you get to a place where you begin to have your period. And even that time, before you begin to develop, um, hallelujah, and you grow. <laughs> so it means that it takes certain level before you can now say that I'm a woman. Now, 
Also, it gets to a point that you can now say, I can marry. And then so I can be somebody's wife. He said, he that finds a wife. So if you are, if not package yourself that way, you can't be found. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the goal is to grow like him or grow into him. Grow and be like him. And it is not automatic. It is based on the hunger and test we have for God. We have to grow. So write these scriptures down. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Matthew 5 verse 6. John 7 37. There must be a hunger from you. There must be something. Isaiah 55 verse 1. There must be that desire. Revelation 21 verse 6. 22 verse 17. God is calling us as a ministry to grow. Because there are certain truths or certain inheritances he has for us. If we have not gotten to that place, we can't have it. We can't be what? Partakers of that inheritance. Hallelujah. So he calls us body as a body to get there. Now the question is, is spiritual growth only for a few? What is the answer? He says, the, the goal is that we all must grow into him and be transformed. The answer is no. So if the answer is no, it means that God has his part and man also has his part. God has his part and the believer also has his part. What you have to do to grow. So why is spiritual growth important? If it is not for a few, but for every believer, why is it important? Why must we grow? Number one, God only entrusts mature stuff to you when you start growing. He gives you mature things when you start growing. As believers, when we are talking about inheritance, we are not talking about a house. Neither are we talking about a farm that your father left you. But we are talking about spiritual things. Hallelujah. So as a ministry, God cannot give us this nation to transform if he doesn't see us growing. He doesn't see us maturing. As a believer, God will not give you certain spiritual truths or spiritual inheritance if he doesn't see you growing. So now the question is, ask yourself, where are you spiritually? When a child is one, the child doesn't know he or she is one. When they come to two, they don't actually know well. Maybe three, then they realize that they are. Four, where you are, you know your age. Unless maybe you are spirit. <laughs> Even spirits, they know their, their time of expiration. Yes, you remember when, <laughs> yes, when Jesus went in Mark chapter 5, the, the demon said, have you come to cast out before our time or destroy? So they know they have time. They know their ages. Hallelujah. Yes, so you know where you are. So, so also must you know spiritually where you are. Where do I stand spiritually? Am I growing or I'm not growing? What do I fancy? Where is my heart? Where do I, what do I like? Where is my mind? The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be. So that is where you will know whether you are growing or not. Are we together? Yeah. So 1 Corinthians 2, 7. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. John 1, verse 12. John 1, verse 12. The more you grow spiritually, the more God entrusts things or stuff into your hands. Your level of intimacy with God is directly proportional to how you grow spiritually. How you relate with him. Your intimacy with him. Okay, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which the word or which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Hallelujah. So, the more you are growing spiritually, the more God is what? And trusting things into your hands. Number two, why must we grow? Huh. Because of the enemy and his demons. As we Pastor Lord quoted the scripture, he says that the heir, as long as he is a child, differed not from a servant, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So, it means that you will be buffeted by demons. The enemy will oppress you. When a believer gains knowledge that divine health is for him or her, they will begin to walk in divine health. Let me ask you a question. 
when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, did you ever hear that Peter was sick? It was his mother-in-law who was sick. When they walked with him, when they had that kind of intimacy and reality, the Bible says that he got to that point where his shadow was healing the sick. You never heard John was sick. You never heard uh, Bartholomew. Even Judas was not sick. Hallelujah. With all the money in the bag that he was chopping, he was not sick. Hallelujah. So it means that <laughs> these people came to the reality of the truth. They know that they are working with God. You can have sicknesses or certain natural infections and other things come into your life, but you know it can't kill you. It will leave you. Hallelujah. I had a testimony of some Nigerian student that went into certain part of Inugu to do their national service. And when they went to one village, Papa Adiboye gave this testimony. He said there is a place, you know, Nigerians, this is an evil forest. Nobody enters there. And then when they went and they said they are they are believers. They gave them that place to stay. And one time they were sleeping and a python came from nowhere coming to swallow them. Some of them started to run away. And one guy stood. He was just speaking in tongues, watching the python coming. The python mentioned the boy's name. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. This is Africa for you. There are powers that will come after your faith. Hallelujah. Coming from a background that they will, they will always pour libation to curse you. Hallelujah. So as the python mentioned one, at, this is the testimony. He mentioned one boy's name. The guy fell flat. Mentioned another one. So the, the third one, when the python was about to mention, started speaking in tongues. Just started speaking in tongues. Before they realized, the python went back into the forest. And that is it. They have established redeemed Christian church in that forest. Hallelujah. So it shows that somebody who knows their identity stood up against that spirit that rules the forest. Hallelujah. But you, maybe you will have entered yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, amen. The righteous is as bold as a lion. It is certain truths that we hear that if the world is waiting for our manifestation, when are we going to rise up for the world to see us? COVID is killing people. We know it is sickness. This same thing happened during the time of John G. Lake in South Africa. The Bible says, uh, the, the history says that he was carrying dead bodies with his hands. In the God generals, it is there. And they came and put some of the saliva of the people who were dying in his hands to check whether he is... And the, the bacteria started dying in his hands. Hallelujah. And then he told them that the life of God is in me. This is reality that the man has caught. And the same John G. Lake went back to Spokane in the U.S. And the Bible says the whole place that he was living, there was nobody sick because he trained disciples and he sent them into what? Like the whole of Tema. He made sure nobody was sick there. Go. Everywhere you enter and there's somebody sick. If that person is not healed, don't come back as a disciple. Hallelujah. God is calling us to grow. God is calling us to mature. There is more God has for us. There is God's heart for this nation is to transform it. How does God transform the nation without our involvement? Hallelujah. It is a challenge for me and you. There are certain powers or certain demons who will trouble you. Sicknesses will trouble you. But if you are still a babe, it will kill you. They will keep you down. 1 John chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. James chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9. A believer gets oppressed by these dark forces when they refuse to grow. When you refuse to grow as a child, you are not eating. Your mother is giving you milk and you spit it out. You will be slim. -o. That child will always be anemic. Hallelujah. There's something that is always going to happen to you, to your natural body. Why? Because you are refusing to eat. You are refusing to grow. If you refuse to eat, you won't grow. Hallelujah. Number three, spiritual growth is important because your spiritual growth benefits you. Tell somebody, it benefits you. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. This is the one that Pastor Lord quoted. It is spiritual growth that opens up 
or opens us up to the resources available for use in the kingdom. There are resources. Let me tell you, all pastors, evangelists, prophets, or so-called believers that you see who are doing extraordinary in the kingdom, some of them, they went through what you are going through, but they turned it into power. They turned their pain into power. Hallelujah. I shared a testimony last week in the ministry that a friend of mine, he was going through certain attacks. When he comes to me, as a new man, pray for me. I said, no, I can't pray. I'll pray with you. So when I call you, then all of us are praying. When I want to fast, you to you to fast. You can't give me food to fast for you. <laughs> some, <laughs> some people, they take contract. So <laughs> let me fast for you. I'm praying for you. So give me money to buy provision. They are not fasting anything. They are not praying for you. Hallelujah. You have to come to that place. Next, we will be sharing on that, on the pillars of growth. Hallelujah. You have to grow. If you are not growing, it's a cause for concern. There's something wrong somewhere. There has to be what? That knowledge. I'll be done very soon. Hallelujah. Your spiritual growth benefits you. So now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, can you give me a message? Let's all amplify. Let's see it very clearly. Amplify or the message by translation. Now, see what Paul is saying. <laughs> and how they have boldly written it in capital letters. Now, what I mean is that as long as the inheritor is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave, although he is the master of all the estates. As long as, are you an inheritor? In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 12, he says that angels are to minister for them who are heirs of salvation. So it means that you are the inheritor. You and Jesus, we were taught last week by Pastor Lord that we, we are heirs of the kingdom. So you are the inheritor. And as long as you keep on not growing, you and a slave, there's no difference. And what happens to a slave? When you watch those movies, what happens to them? Or even you, who has a maid with you, when you wake up and you need water, can you fetch me water? Can you do this? So as a slave or a believer who is not growing, sickness will be doing like this. Tomorrow, this one, cholera, malaria, typhoid. And then hospital, you are going and coming. All your money, they will take it. Hallelujah. So now what I mean is that as long as the inheritor is a child and underage, he does not differ from a slave. And although he's the master of all the estate, but he is under guardians and administrators or trustees unto the date fixed by his father. God's part is to see that you are growing and then he releases you. Your part is to begin to do what you are supposed to do and then God makes sure that now the inheritance, you can walk in it. Are we together? Or are we together? Number four, because of your ministry, that's why spiritual growth is important. Ministry. Your service to God and others. Your service to God. That's why spiritual growth is important. That's why as a believer you need to grow. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 to 5. As you begin to grow, others in the family begin to benefit from you. As you begin to grow, people in the family, they begin to benefit from you. So if you are in a family and then your mother and father, excuse me to say, are not well able and you, you, are, you have gotten opportunity to school and you have grown in knowledge and you are working, are you not the one who will definitely take care of your mother and father and even your junior siblings? It means that the people in the family naturally are benefiting from you. So, so also spiritually, there are certain things that I need to benefit from you or not. You understand? So as you begin to grow, I get that benefit. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principle of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Somebody say perfection. It's the same as growth. Let us go on to growth. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms. Okay, when you continue that, Paul is saying that. Come to the place of growth. Let's not keep on talking about these things. By now, we shouldn't be teaching you these things anymore. You should be teaching other people who are not coming into the faith. But now, we keep on teaching you. When we, come, we lay the same foundation, we are teaching you the same thing. We shouldn't be teaching the same thing again and again and again. It means that God is calling us to that place that we have to mature because he has certain strong inheritances into our hands. Hallelujah. 
Oh, amen. Certain things are for babes. Number five. You have to understand spiritual growth is important because there are some things. It's only for babies. It's not for the matured. The matured have to grow above them. First Corinthians 3, verse 1 to 3. A lot of babies or babes. You see how, um, excuse me to say, my brother is holding the beautiful daughter. <laughs> it means that he's matured now. So he's the one carrying the baby. A time is going to come that the baby has to grow and also carry others. But if you, you say that uh, somebody said, uh, somebody was singing a song that adulthood is a scam. And I said, ah, so you want to always be a baby. And then they'll be taking care of you. You'll never grow. Hallelujah. It's a cause for concern. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. This is Paul's concern to the Corinthian church. When I come to you, there are some things I want to share with you, but I can't communicate those truths to you because you are still babies. Next verse. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. So when I came, I realized your estate or your state. So what I gave to you was the, not the matured ones. I gave you milk because if I give to you the solid food, it can kill you. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you have a big loaf of bread, you can't swallow the whole what? loaf. You have to take it in bits before the whole loaf is now swallowed into your system. If you force the whole thing in your throat, you end up in UGMC. Hallelujah. Are we together? So when it comes to growth, it is in stages. You have to. There's something the Lord is calling you to do. What? When you begin to grow like that, it is when you are growing as a child of God, that is when service becomes enjoyable. That is when, when you go to church, you begin to benefit. They are worshiping and you are not coming. Yeah, man of God is preaching. Ah, okay, he's very eloquent. He's good. He understands English. You are in the flesh. Hallelujah. <laughs> People are picking spiritual things. Listen to me. When you come to church and the word is com coming, when Pastor Lord said that the most important part of the, the worship is the word, I was like, but the Holy Spirit said to me, I commend you to God. And to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That is the word of God. Acts 20, 32. Hallelujah. So it is the word of God that gives you an inheritance. So when the word is coming, you are not sitting down judging in your head and trying to think by, is he speaking good English? Does he have a good accent or not? Hallelujah. No, that is not it. It's the word of God. You swallow it. That is how inheritance has come to you. Hallelujah. So you put it there. Imagine I quoted the wrong thing. So now, <laughs> so what I said, if it was wrong, it means that pastor, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's just joking. Hallelujah. Uh, mercy. Hallelujah. A lot of babies refuse to grow. And if you refuse to grow, what happens is that ministries or churches that people are refusing to grow, what happens is murmurings, envy, fights, immaturity. You see all kinds of gossips going on. We want to get to that place where I said to Pastor Lord and we're praying some time ago in Achimota Forest and he said we should pray that none will be left behind. Why is he praying that prayer? It's not only for the natural or the material that God should bless all of us. We should all come to the place where God is seeing us as mature people. So somebody will not be envying Coco because God is blessing her. I will not be envious of Ronel because God is using him. Oh, he has a sharp dimension of what? A certain healing or prophetic gift. Hallelujah. But I see that as God is using him in this area, he's also using me in that dimension. Hallelujah. We are all growing. We are all what? I explained this, that when it comes to the kingdom, what every nation is doing is just a bit. Every nation global. What Christ embassy is doing is just a bit. What action is doing is just a bit. That's why they are, it is called denominations. What Catholic is doing is a bit. Methodists redeem everyone. But when all of them bring their bits and pieces together, that is when it forms the whole council of God. So one ministry or one individual believer cannot do all. Hallelujah. That's why we need to grow. That's why we need to what? Grow. We need to mature. So when you come like this, be eager and hungry to grow. 
when I'm coming to church, I'm coming to hear something that will challenge my faith, that will help me grow in Christ, grow in my work with him. So this year, when I'm setting goals, my first goal, I know that I have business goals to reach this target, but that is not the first goal. My first goal is that I need to have that kind of intimate growth. Maybe I have to grow in the area of missions. I have to grow in the area of evangelism. I have to grow in the area of prayer. Or I have a problem in this weakness or holiness. And I have to grow past that. Hallelujah. Or oh, amen. I have to grow in intimacy and fellowship with the spirit. And not always being at the same one level. When you became born again, one tongue. Your tongues never change. Even babies, when they are born. And then they say, ba, ba, ba. A tongue count, they say, ba, ba, da, da. But you, your own has been the same. It's a cause for concern now. Hallelujah. I went to, some time ago, at Chair Mountain, 12 years ago, some guy I went to meet, two, like two years ago, two years after, when I went, the same goi, 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 as ah, there's something wrong somewhere. It means that you have not received the gift. You are just speaking because you hear people speaking. Hallelujah. Oh, amen. As a believer, you have to grow. Amen. Same tone. Igo, 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 two years after, igo, 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 No, yeah. There's something wrong somewhere. Hallelujah. God loves us. And he has a lot for you and I. Today, when worship was going on, I saw that we were praying for one another. So after this message, we are going to, as the worship is going on, just be led by the Spirit. Anybody that you see that the Lord has laid out for you, just move to them, hold your hands and pray with them. Just be praying. We just to minister to one another. That's what I saw in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Number six, spiritual growth is important because of fruitfulness. You can't be fruitful if you are not growing. There must be some fruits. You can see that the Corinthian church were demonstrating certain gifts, but Paul never saw fruits. Fruit is where the growth is. Hallelujah. So when you go into a ministry, or you want to assess and check the maturity of a believer, look for the fruits of the Spirit in the life of that person. Are you seeing them? If you are not seeing them, it means that there's something wrong. Maybe I have maybe about three or four of the fruits of the Spirit. If they are nine or six, let me keep on growing. I used to say I don't have patience. And the Holy Spirit said, no, I mean you. You have to have. Hallelujah. <laughs> The spirit of meekness. All they are parts of the fruits of the spirit. Until you grow, you can't bear fruit. Tell somebody, until you grow, you can't bear fruit. Yeah, fruits in your life never shows up until you grow. When a tree is matured, that is when we see that the, fr the, the fruits will start coming up on the tree. It will never... When Jesus realized that the fig tree has grown and it was green... He needed to eat. When he went, he didn't find fruit. And he said, from today, nobody will eat fruit from you. Hallelujah. It's a cause for concern. That is where God is calling us to. Because the times are short. We have entered into the, not the last days. We are in the extra times. Hallelujah. Football. The time that they have added, the six minutes, is almost up. Hallelujah. So, it's not the extra time. After the extra time, we add certain minutes. That's the one that we are talking about. It means that now we have to go to penalty shootout. So God is calling us to that place. Without spiritual growth, some graces of God and their application cannot be manifested in your life. This is what the Lord was. I'm writing, I'm giving you to him points because the Holy Spirit just, was just giving it to me and I'm writing. Hallelujah. Without spiritual growth, you can't see this. You can't see certain grace of God in your life. Number seven, fulfilling your purpose. Ephesians 2.10. If you are not growing, you can't fulfill purpose. If you are not maturing, purposes of God concerning your life cannot be fulfilled. If you don't grow spiritually, you don't feel the vacuum that is in you when you became born again. So when you were saved, you were a babe. Now you have to grow into that stage of maturity where you can be what? A man and begin to reproduce, and begin to become a blessing where people can find refuge under you. Hallelujah. Spiritual growth is important because it can affect God's plan. It affects his will. It affects other believers. It affects your ministry and even the devil. 
So spiritual growth is important because it can affect God's plan for you. God has a plan for you. Man of God, do you know that Jacob was also part of the people or the reason why Israel's destiny was delaying? Because when he, 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 he says seven years for one woman, they realized that no, it was a mistake. They have given me a wrong woman. So let me also go for another seven years so that I can have the one that I want. He wanted his own desire. So he delayed God's plan for years. That's why the angel broke his rib. Said, no, you have delayed. Uh, it's, it's what? The, a hip. Good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. So when you are not growing, you are delaying God's plan for you. He has a purpose. There is something God wants to do with your life. You are not maturing, so he can't do it. And when you are not doing it that way, it's like somebody who has been called as an intercessor to be praying for people in your family, and you are not praying. What will happen to the people in the family? They are in the darkness, or they are in dark. So it means that most of them will die without being saved. And when you die without being saved, what happens to you? You die eternally. It means that that, that person, there's no way they can what have salvation. They've lost it already. And it's because you didn't pray. You didn't rise up in your place of maturity. You are not growing. Hallelujah. You have to be an intercessor for the family or for the, the country, for this ministry, for your business, for your nation, and you are not doing it. So you are hindering God's purpose and plan. So that's why I'm saying that God has his part. You too, you have your part. When it comes to spiritual growth, it's not God alone. It is the two sides. Hallelujah. So you read Luke chapter 2, verse 40 and 52. You find it there. Jesus grew. This is what is in Luke chapter 2, 40 and 52. Jesus grew. And you must also grow. If Jesus grew, you have to also grow. So I'm ending. The last point is, why must we grow? Because it is commanded by the scriptures. It is a command. Tell somebody it's a command. Yeah. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Second Peter 3 18. First Peter 2 verse 1 to 2. First Peter 2 verse 1 to 2. 1 Samuel 2, 26. Okay, so, but grow in grace. Tell somebody, grow in grace. That's what I'm saying, that certain graces of God cannot be given to you. So, in grace, even in grace, we grow. Hallelujah. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and what? Savior Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. To him be the glory both now and forevermore. We are to grow. We are to grow. Can everyone grow? Or is growth for everyone? Once you desire, you can. Once you desire, you can. It is a work between God and man for spiritual growth to materialize. It is the work between God and you, you and God, God and me, me and God, all of us, because God has more for us. God has a lot for us. Please shall we rise up on our feet. There are lots. That desire, that heart, that hunger to grow. The same way in the natural when your child is not growing, it's a concern for you. That's the same way God also feels when you are not maturing, when he's not seeing certain fruits in your life, certain growth in your life. All you are going to pray is that, Lord, I recognize my faults. Help me. Help me this morning. Help me this morning. And grant me the grace into that place of maturity. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord.